excited to be showing you this video of this painting I recently finished. And I feel like this is a good piece to be kind of talking about my worldview and my relationship with, with, with just making sense of everything, uh, of trying to make sense and recon reconciliation with consciousness and what it means to be human. And I've been thinking a lot about that, especially with this piece and how I or how, what I do as an artist. Um, and so I'm going to be talking largely about my own personal subjective experiences for the most part, but it's because I'm talking about that. I, I, I think that is, is, is the important part. It, that's what we as, as humans have the most direct con contact with the divine. I think a, a lot of people and it's it's interesting if I could use like different orders, different monastic orders within the the Catholic Church. Uh, I always found them so fascinating. How there's the the Benedictines that their their unique characteristic of that order of the monks that would live together is, is work that you find God through hard work, and the Carmelites was through reflection, contemplation, and, and prayer. Versus the French Franciscans, which would be like living with the poverty, living with the poor, helping the poor, or the Benedictines, or not the Benedictines, the Dominicans, which was through preaching. And so there's all these different axioms of, of, of uh, unique manifestations of the divine that individual people can uh, be gravitated toward or have a specific calling to it. But I think for me and, and what I see as being able to benefit the whole of humanity is seeking the divine within the individual because the individual like my experience as as me as sam that gives me the most direct contact with the divine it allows me to you know i, I can't i can't understand the inner mechanisms of myself but i can at a deeper level than i can of other people i think because we are all connected together at some deep level I think our consciousness is all intertwined together and we're all unique expressions of a common source or supreme good. But that these individual expressions of it, that by, by understanding my own individual expression of I can understand the source better and be able to do the alchemist work of bringing forth something from a higher dimension into into this one so that we could use it as a tool and be able to have some utility to it. And so I, the, the way I, I think of it is like a well where you dig down deep enough and then you hit the aquifer. And so the well is the, the individual experience and the aquifer is this, this, uh, this source that we're tapping into. Pretty much all the paintings I do are based off of my own experiences through uh, dreams or ideas and things like that I have. And it's not, I'm trying so hard to make it not be an egotistical thing of trying to, which is kind of the norm for postmodernist art, that it's all about, you know, the, the artist's subjective experience and nobody can say anything critical about it because, you know, it's not your experience. And it's, I think that's a very, I think one of the worst things that somebody can do is to turn something that's sacred into something mundane and I think that's exactly what's going on there. But it's such a fine line between trying to understand yourself to connect back to the source and so you're playing the role as the conduit. The earliest people who looked up at the stars and conceptualized the, the decans or the, the great zodiac gods and knew that they were of a different ontology, they were of a different structure than human and space-time. And so they had to create some sort of intermediary between them. So if you look at some of these early examples on the on the record of, of human civilization with these early religions, they would build statues and perform very specific rituals and ceremonies with the goal of encapsulating some of the divinity within these decans into the statues and so then they could then perform additional rituals and ceremonies in order to extract the knowledge from these statues and so there was always this bridge that needed to be had between the this higher level of of being and the ones that we exist on as both having uh, access to the higher but then also being uh, animalistic and having animal traits 
and this uh, this expression has always been there, and it's it's in all reli- most major religions. It is so much ingrained in us that we have both this divine aspect and this animalistic aspect. Whether and whether this conduit, this bridge, is uh, you, you know a god man uh, as as like Christ or um, there's Egyptian versions of that, Mesopotamian versions of that, or even just like the different stories in Greek mythology of like Persephone, like going into the underworld, or the, these these different uh, journeys that would take place between both the mundane and the the divine environment, the the godly environment. I see what I'm wanting to do to be a microcosmic expression of this this human endeavor to try to access the higher dimension, whether we call it God, the Deccans, the Muses, there's, it goes by many different names, but it's existed throughout all of human history and most likely way longer than we have any actual record of. And I think the, the equivalent of this, this statue acting as a bridge within my own my own microcosmic expression of this would be the painting. I think that's a good example because there's two aspects to a painting. One is the technical aspect of it, which is extremely important because we, we as, as, as physical mammals, as human beings, we have ingrained with us the, the way we view the world is that of, uh, of something that is part of it perspective outlines uh, of between different objects and proportions these are all the the imagistic tools that we use to navigate around the world and it's in a way it's converting this higher uh, this this higher conception into something that can be comprehended by the the human aspect the, the the animalistic aspect of humans the materialistic and I think that is absolutely crucial. And then, but then there's also that other aspect of it, which is being open and being in tune to let something that you don't fully understand, you don't fully, or you're not able to fully conceptualize to be carried within you, not thought of, it, it doesn't originate with you, but that you are acting as, as the symbolic Mercury, as, as the messenger who is carrying these these ideas from one dimension to the other and because you're the messenger you are not the the source of the divine knowledge there is aspects that can be trapped if if you are properly in alignment with these higher orders that you can capture and have within the painting that is both foreign to you as it is to other people and it is through some form of ritualistic or symbolic interaction with these paintings, whether it be through looking at it, through uh, being in tune with what pieces strike you imagistically, that you can't even describe why they're powerful to you. They just are. That we can then start thinking about them and these ideas can, can, can live in our minds. And as we interact with the world, these ideas can change and manifest and unfold and give us insight into different possibilities into the into the future visual arts painting is not the only way this can be done i think there's been lots of people in the past musicians artists authors who have been able to tap into this but this is this is my particular orientation is to try to take these ideas that I, I have ideas and dreams they're, they're imagistic in nature and so I see converting dreams and ideas and visions into images as being the the closest the closest relationship from these higher order ethereal non-tangible rainbow road isk type things into something that's tangible and that would be through the, the light waves that the human eyes can detect. If I acknowledge that my specific 
orientation is to dig deep within my own consciousness to try to bring bring things out from that. I, I think it's very, very much the, the most modern example of how this takes place is to think of, I don't know what you would call it. I never really played video games that much, but like a, a sandbox type game or where there's a world and you can kind of choose uh, I, I don't know, I, I think I heard someone talk about this, that it was like kind of a World of Warcraft type thing, but you could choose your your category or your, your, your tribe. And so you could be a warlock or a wizard. I'm, I'm butchering this completely, um, but I hope the analogy stays valid. But you could be like a warlock or a wizard or a warrior or a druid or an archer. And choosing each of these fields unlocks itself uh, a unique strategy that's unique to that specific expression within the game. And there are certain things that would be a very poor decision from one, one, one type of character versus the other. And so I would assume that as an archer, you would not want to be on the front lines fighting tanks and, and really heavy hitters because your stats are probably not going to be high in health, but your advantage is going to be able to attack people from a distance. And and vice versa, like if you're a heavy hitter, you want to be in the front lines. But so many people, from my observation, and I fall into this category also, think of ourselves as all homogenous. And the problem is that is that some people are able to be on that front line and just get hit time and time again and keep bouncing back versus other people might be extremely sensitive and can't that that's not their ability but they can judge themselves as being superior uh, inferior or not sufficient because they're judging it by that same criteria that that other trait that other class fits in perfectly with and so i think of each individual's expression here on earth is very much like there's all these different classes, way more than the the six or eight that might be in a video game. Maybe there's a million different classes, maybe, maybe even more, maybe less, probably less. But there's all these different classes of expression. But the thing is, we don't know, and we didn't pick which class we are. And so there's a big question mark over what our class is. And so it's up to us to figure out what is our class, first of all, and then how can we use that to create uh, exploit its strengths that allow us to be as 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 most strong of an expression of that class as we can possibly be. And I think there's also subclasses. So like within deciding or figuring out what class you're in, there's different directions you can take it for training. If you want to go down these different you know, training trees of, of what kind of skills you want to do. But that's all uh, secondary into your overarching class. And I think not very many people know what class they are in. And I think for me, at least, that was the most exciting thing to realize that when I was 12 or 13 years old, maybe, maybe OK, maybe like 13 or 14 years old, I created a Google Docs and basically created my own religious order because you know I, I had the my, my worldview was very much influenced by uh, Western uh, Christianity Catholicism and I was always so fascinated with these different religious orders that I alluded to earlier particularly the Carmelite that was the one that, that really stuck true to me and I really liked the symbolism in it but I had a lot of problems even from a really early age that I wasn't able to integrate within the dogma of these major religions and I always had a I was always scared of being kind of categorized in a very specific group that had its own people had their own prejudices or ideas that came along with it some valid some some not but anyways I basically created my own religious order and it was only for myself I was the only one that could join but I gave it its own colors, its own um, traits. I basically tried to understand like, okay, if I was to create 
this monastic order and I was the only one that could be involved in it, how exactly, how precisely would I want it to be? What color of robe would I want to wear? What, uh, what would my symbol be that was on that robe? And I went through this and I, I kept coming back to it and adding more into it. I would add like, you know, different sacraments or different, it, it was all kind of under that, that Christian um, worldview, but it wasn't, it wasn't Christian in nature. It was very much trying to, trying to figure out this, this exact situation with the worldview that I had, that I was given. And I didn't really realize what I was doing until much later, but it's still something that I like to think about and come back to because it, it um, to have something that's, that you take from yourself and have it exist in the physical dimension, it gives so much more validity and realness to it because your, your mind is unbelievably flexible and can change. But if it's, if it's something that's printed and out in front of you and you can see it, even if it's just on the computer, on a, on a PDF or a Google Doc, there's something that, that it's out there in the world. And I think that's how it should be. And once you kind of realize exactly what this, this, uh, this class is that you're in, that it's going to be like it's out in the world because you're gonna be expressing that and you're gonna know how to maximally, or the, the direction that you need to start going, maybe not the exact path, but you'll, you'll know if you need to go north, south, east, or west at least into expressing this, this trait that you have been gifted on and trying to figure out why you were gifted that, what's, what is your, your role that you play in this uh, very complicated and dynamic world that we live in. And so kind of going past that preamble, going more directly uh, talking about this painting, it was inspired largely by a Carl Jung quote where I don't have the exact quote, but he it's one of his most famous ones where he says that in order for a tree to reach heaven, the roots must reach down to hell or some variation of that. But essentially saying that there is this dichotomy that has to exist in order for the best to be expressed. Jordan Peterson talks about this in a way also that that the the definition of the word meek as often referred to in the Bible that the meek shall inherit the earth has been largely perversed. And it doesn't mean the one that is, will always turn the other cheek in every situation. But a better definition is that the meek is the one who knows how to wield the sword, but has it sheathed. And so having that power, but choosing to use it for good. And there, there is an intrinsic dichotomy that comes into play with both of these ideas. And so in, in this piece, the, the environment that this piece was taking in place was my unconsciousness. And that is the, the dark forest in all symbolism. In, and if you see it in literature and paintings, the dark forest is the unconsciousness. And so within that, that dark forest, within that unconsciousness, there is a giant tree and it's lit. And so this is reminiscent of Carl Jung when he said that the unconscious is not just evil by nature. People think of this as just being your your impulses and your your dark desires, but it's not evil by nature. It's also the source of the highest good. The highest good you can you can realize is also in your un unconscious, right next to the to this this evil. And so this is something you have to you have to navigate through. And so this giant lit tree, for me, was very symbolic. I think of of this this good that can be in the middle of this dark forest. There's this tree that is, is light and strong and stable, and but it's deep in this dark forest. And then within that tree, there is another darkness of the hole that resides in this tree. And then in that darkness, there's the, the little old hermit who's, who's sitting there in reflection. And so I'm still curious. I feel like there's so much more into this that I don't, I'm not consciously aware of yet but it seems very much like cycles or, or cylinders going into the unconscious, that it goes from dark light, dark light. And I think that's, that's a, a really interesting, an interesting way of, of navigating that. I'd be curious if any of the, the people watching this are very informed with ideas from like Carl Jung or Joseph Campbell or it, just any sort of philosophical bent. It doesn't have to be purely Jungian. 
of what your thoughts are about this piece and if there's anything that like really resonates with you that I hadn't I haven't even thought about or talked about because I think what's so interesting is because I think that I can tap into something that that everyone is sharing that the, the source that I can tap into is the same source that's being expressed through you just through a reduction um, a, a yang way of its its that specific expression of it I think there can be things that resonate with me or even don't resonate with me but I can capture from that source and then by putting it out into the world other people might be able to resonate with it with both similar ways as me but then also with their unique expression so like someone who's a like I'm definitely not a uh, a tank in this in this uh, analogy I'm not a um, I don't know what you would call it like a like a paladin or I don't know a warrior or something like that on the front lines that is I don't think that that is me I think I'm definitely much more someone that plays a supporting role on the sidelines or, or something or something like that I'm not sure I'm still trying to figure it out it'd be interesting I'd be curious what like have you ever thought of yourself your your expression of of what you're called to do your consciousness of what it would be in video game terms I think that'd be kind of an interesting uh an interesting uh thought experiment but anyways I think if people have these different expressions they can interact with this this painting in different ways I guess I guess a, a, a maybe a more grounded example of that would be like the Enneagrams which has been extremely popular as just different ways of categorizing personalities and I think I think in a way it's kind of like that but it's it's kind of I don't know it's just my own way it's what resonates with me a bit more than something like that um, maybe just because there's more kind of images it's more imagistic to think of it in video game terms than than the numbers in my you know in my opinion but uh but that's just my own expression and, and some people who are maybe 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 even like thinking numbers like you're able to to think of things in very abstract non-imagistic ways like i that that's so fascinating and i think there's so many interesting expressions of that source in all these different people and that we all have to work together and we all have to figure out how we can integrate that and and find some sort of a way of, of bringing out you know different different ideas from this 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 source so that we can interact with it and get better and get better ideas and insights that we then in turn can use to access this even more and so it's it's like by focusing on myself and playing the, the very narrow line of trying not to go into egotistical and selfish endeavors, but then on the other end of not trying to be uh, the stereotypical kind of hippie of, you know, oh, just like world peace, like whatever, like I don't need a job type thing. <laughs> but somehow like ride that middle line, which is really hard to do. And I fail quite often with doing that. But by doing that, it, it, it is the paradoxically it's the way that I can connect with the most amount of people is through myself and that that is my kind of mythology my mythos that I'm exploring and that I'm exploring with a lot of these paintings but I, I hope by that same definition I hope that by me being vulnerable about my own uh, worldview and, and way of trying to trying to give meaning to what I'm doing that that can exp inspire you to think about that for yourself and with your own endeavors you're doing to not shy away from from getting at the heart of what it is that you're doing and so exactly that same way that by digging deep into myself I can tap I, I, I my my faith is that by digging deep into myself I can tap in and help other people that by being and, and, and kind of exposing my own worldview, I can inspire you guys to explore your own. And I think that's that's would be the the highest articulation of what it is I'm trying to do. Is I'm not focused. I'm not focused on on just expressing whatever the subjective blah blah blah, blah like emotion and stuff like that that like you'd see in like postmodernist that nobody can 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 connect to. I'm trying to figure out 
what it means to be human and what it means to be a mammal and to be an animal, but then also figure out what does that mean to have some sort of divinity within each individual person and sort of balance that. And I think so, so I think my worldview is always trying to figure out a balance between the mundane and the spirituality, the, the, the divine, but then also the balance between the individual and the collective. And so that's my Jungian quaternities of, of opposites would be that. Anyways, at the very least, I hope that was just food for thought. So that was something that I've been thinking about quite a lot, but haven't been able to fully articulate until now. And so I, I hope I hope you were able to gain something from this, even if it was just to watch the time lapse. Yeah, so I hope you like this. If, if you like what I'm doing and you want to support me, it would help a lot to subscribe, to, to like, leave a comment. Um, it's really helpful to hear what you guys think about this, whether it be constructive criticism or something you really liked. Uh, it all helps. And I would love to try to foster a community where where there is this this bridge between aesthetics and art, but then also with both rationality, trans rationality, spiritual ideas, and all sorts of different things, but have it be grounded in some sort of artistic or aesthetic practice.